In the last two modules, we explored different ways of thinking about the costs of firms. And we began with a table illustrating the different types of costs and then explored how they're related to one another. Here I've replicated a table like this, except I've only partially filled it in. But there's enough information in the table for you to fill out the rest of the table. So before you take the next quiz, I'd like you to fill in the rest of the table and have that available to yourself as you take the quiz, because I'll ask you some questions about what's happening in your table. You can then ask yourself if the costs represented in this table give rise to the general shapes of cost curves that we've derived so far. In particular, is it the case that the marginal cost is initially falling and eventually increasing? If so, that indicates that initially it's getting easier and easier to produce, but eventually it's getting harder and harder to produce. And if that's the case, the average curve should have U-shapes as well. Because if it's initially getting easier and easier to produce, then average costs should initially be falling, and eventually they'll rise as it gets harder and harder to produce. Once you've done that, I'd like you to think a little bit more about the relationship between average quantities and marginal quantities, but in a slightly different context, a context that we'll return to when we get together in class. In this table, I've illustrated in the first column the number of workers hired by your firm, and in the second column the total output that your firm is producing with different numbers of workers. So if you don't hire any workers, you don't produce any output. If you hire one, you produce 40 units of output and so forth. Then I'd like you to fill in the third column, the average output per worker, which should be pretty easy to do given the first two columns. And finally, I'd like you to fill in a fourth column, which we call the marginal product of labor. The marginal product of labor is the additional output produced if one more worker is hired. Oftentimes we define the marginal product of labor in terms of worker hours, but in this case, in the context of this table, we just have the number of workers, so we'll define the marginal product of labor as the additional output that you're going to produce when you hire one additional worker. So in this last column, fill in what's the additional output from hiring the first worker, what's the additional output from hiring the second worker, and so on and so forth. And then check to see if what we've said about the relationship between average and marginal quantities holds in this table. Remember, we said the only way for an average to rise is for marginal quantities to lie above the average. The only way your course average can rise is if the next exam grade lies above that course average. And the only way for an average to fall is for the marginal quantity to lie below the average. The only way for your course grade to fall is if the next exam grade is below the current average. The same thing was true for marginal and average costs. The only way the average costs could be downward sloping, could be falling, is if the marginal costs were below the average to drag that average down. And once they started rising, once the average costs curve started rising, the marginal cost had to be above the average to drag that average up. So check and see whether that's the case for these last two columns. Is it the case that the only way that the average number of the average output per worker is rising is if the marginal product per worker is above the average and the only way it's falling is if the marginal product of a worker is below the average.